Hey y'all, how you doing today? Uh, coming to you from the garage again. Uh, Sam here on my YouTube channel, Slantfish65SD. Uh, over the weekend, uh, last Saturday, I went to a car show. And I was fortunate enough to get a chance to go. And it was actually my very first car show of 2019. So I've been, uh, when I wasn't, I recently started a new job, and so I was a little apprehensive to ask about, you know, hey, can I have this weekend off? You know, can I have a Saturday off? You know, I want to go to a car show. So I did ask, and uh, she, my boss, rewarded me very graciously uh, with the day off, and I took advantage of it. So, uh, unfortunately, here's the big bad part. Um... I did not record anything. No video, no pictures, no nothing. It wasn't a huge show. It was only maybe 15 cars altogether. It was a YouTube, uh, not YouTube, sorry. It was a Facebook group. Uh, Southern Tennessee Mopar Club, I believe is the name of the group. Um, very, very good people. Uh, very nice people. And so I thank them for all of that. However, I was barraged with lots and lots of questions about my truck from two or three different people. And I was very, uh, I'm very uh, willing, it was very willing to answer those questions. But unfortunately, some of those questions I couldn't answer because I just didn't know the answers at that time. So what I'm going to do for you today is I'm going to go through and I'm going to try to answer your answer those questions about modifications I've made to my truck and give you a little more in-depth view of my truck uh, everything about it changes I've made modifications I've made things that I, and how they have affected the vehicle and why I made those changes okay mod or modifications okay and or repairs okay first of all I guess we'll go ahead and we will start with something that seems rather small and insignificant, but actually it is very significant because if you don't have this working, you will wind up in a situation where you uh, are very, very aggravated and uh, greatly impaired what can happen is your uh ah here it is I was looking for this okay now let me show you something wiper bushings like i said greatly impaired okay now on dodge trucks like my 92 mine is a 1992 d150 what will happen is the wiper bushings will wear out. As a matter of fact, I have got, yes, right here. Here's one of them. Right here, you can see the wiper bushing is pretty well shot. It's worn out. What happens, and I just dropped it. It doesn't matter. What happens is the center hole in that bushing wears out and it wears down and then it allows the link bar or linkage bar to fall off of this little knob, okay, that is being turned around by the wiper motor. Unfortunately, when you buy one of these, this is part number is, let's see, can we get that? 49447, help. You buy that at like any auto parts store, pretty much anywhere in the country. What happens is basically you only get two of those bushings. Now, what you need to do is get this 108. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, 118301. Okay, yeah, so that's what you need to get. This 10 of those bushings, just like the one I showed you, but a much, much newer. And here's one of them. 
you can see this is all nice and pretty and not worn out and everything else now like i said that inside hole gets worn out and gets a lot of slop in it and then it just falls off that little knob there that's mounted to the wiper motor there's an arm mounted to the to the output shaft of the wiper motor it has a little knob mounted to that and it just spins around and whenever the wipers are turned on and it runs that shaft pushes that arm back and forth sort of like uh, I guess you could say like the think of like a steam engine steam train the engine on that it has the pistons up front and the arm comes out and it attaches to the wheels and that wheel goes around and around and around well that piston is connected to that big long rod and goes in and out it's a very similar thing okay so very similar uh, operation okay so what you want to do is you want to get this when your wipers fail you want to get this okay now you can get this to get you out of trouble you know but usually if you get this you'll probably if you want to redo all of them you'll probably have to get like two or three packs of these okay also you want to use probably some dielectric grease to help put these on and help lubricate them okay so that's another good little tip there um, I've done that on mine at least twice. So that keeps them working like they're supposed to. Like I said, you can get these at most any auto parts store. Just use that part number. Okay. So next. So next thing is how do you how do you get to those bushings? It's very, very simple. Now on mine, now some models of the Dodge trucks, they don't have this feature, but mine does. What it is, is you can pull this, you pull the arm up, and then there's a little tip right there. Once you pull this arm up so far, you can pull this out, and then you can wiggle and move the whole arm assembly off of that shaft. Then... You go through and take all of these screws out. There's a series of them across through there. There's probably, I think, uh, let's see, there's one, two, three, one, two, three, six, seven, eight. There's eight screws. Take them out and then carefully lift this thing up because you don't want to ding the paint against these, against these shafts, okay? And then just carefully wiggle and move this thing up and out. And then once you get it out, you can uh, you can get to the wiper linkage down there. You can even take, I don't know if you can see it down in there. Let me get the light. Whoop, sorry about that. You can take those bolts out and you can get that stanchion or that wiper shaft out. And you can get to the link, it makes getting to the linkage even better. You can see some of the, you can see the wiper motor down in there you can see that arm that comes off of it and then you can see that link bar that comes off of that okay see what i'm talking about now this worked out really really well for me uh so of course my wipers work now um but it's really irritating to get into a vehicle and try to drive it somewhere and then it rains or something doesn't work okay like your wipers or your heater or your whatever, okay? Okay, um, warning, I'm probably going to break this video up into maybe two or three pieces. So I'm going to try to keep this video brief, but let's just go with it as it is, okay? Let's just roll with the punches, all right? All right, um, let's see. Cooling system. This is my fan. I'm having to turn the camera sideways, I know. But that is the fan. That is the cooling fan. That is off of, I think, a Chrysler minivan. That, uh, while I know that's not the prettiest mounting system in the world, it does work. And it works actually really, really well. Um, the... Uh, the fan works really well. 
it works very well at keeping the engine cool. Uh, it works exceptionally well. With that fan running, it does not overheat. And this is a three-row core radiator, I believe. Um, also, that's another change I made. I think the original radiator, yes, I know the original radiator was a plastic and aluminum piece. This one is not. This is a... Uh, this is all brass and copper radiator that I replaced the original one with. And it works exceptionally well. Now, to control the fan, turn it on and off automatically, I have this controller right here. This is a automatic controller that is settable. I can turn it to certain settings and turn it on. This was really, really dirt cheap. It has been very functional and worked really well, even though it has been really dirt cheap. And I bought it whew, years ago. Years and years ago. Okay, so it's worked exceptionally well. All right, so. Um, I also, inside here in the cab, I have a... Override. Here we go. Here's the override. This little switch right here. Yeah, I know the switch isn't like very, very solidly mounted. And you can see up there and here, the fan is running. Now, I don't have the fan hooked into the air conditioning system so when I turn the AC on I have to you know I have to turn the AC, turn that fan on uh, when I'm stopped somewhere okay so I'm usually a pretty good person though about watching the temperature hand and that watching the temperature gauge and watching that hand on it and seeing where it's at I'm usually pretty good about that but it's just something to keep in mind okay um those changes worked out exceptionally well because you might be saying, why did you make those changes to begin with? Well, because the engine driven fan, there was nothing wrong with it. It works, except it works exceptionally well. However, it's way back here. Okay. On here. And it was a thermostatic fan and it worked really, really well, but I wanted to go to the electric fan to get rid of the parasitic loss of the engine turning the fan. Okay, that's just, you know, it's the way I think. Okay, so that par little bit of parasitic loss, you know, means that much more power can go to the rear wheels. All right, so it's just like getting rid of air conditioning on some vehicles and, or maybe power steering. All right, now, battery removal. My battery is in the back. It's not here. Okay, so... You might be wondering, what is this big clump here? This is, of all things, this is my positive cable. This is the cable end. I did not want to go and snip it off and remove it. I wanted to just leave it in place in case I had to put the battery back up here. As a matter of fact, you can see the negative cable end right here. And now I have ran a cable from it down to the frame. When I will go ahead and I will show you the battery back here. Okay, here we go. Let's see, let me raise the cover up. I should have went ahead and done this, but... All right. Here it is, battery's back here, and the battery does not look fantastic. It is dirty and dusty, but hey, this truck gets driven every day. Here's the negative cable cables. They run down, one runs down and goes all the way to the front to the engine. The other one runs down and goes to the frame. Okay, here, of course, here's my positive. As you can see, here's the negative and the positive signs. The positive, of course, runs up and goes right straight to the starter terminal. 
on the terminal on the starter. So there you go. Very simple, but highly effective, and it works really well. And as you can see, yes, it is a uh, it is an Optima, and it's many, many years old. Um, matter of fact, I am not entirely certain how old it is. Yeah, I just, I don't know for sure. So, oops. Okay, I'll just put that back down in there. It can just sit there. It'll be fine. Now, this has worked very well for me. I've done this swap years ago, and you might be saying, wait a minute, what about that space you're taking up with, the, with that? Wait a minute. This is supposed to be a truck. You're supposed to use it as a truck. Well, I do, but I also drive it a lot. And to improve the drivability, I move the battery back here. And not only that, I just wanted to. Okay? So... Also, something else to think about this as well. I'm not hauling like tons of rock in here, okay? I'm just hauling, you know, some tools, a few other things, some car parts and stuff like that. I usually don't need this little bit of space here, okay? So it's not that critical. I mean, it's not taking up that much space. It's actually not really that much of a hindrance. If really any at all. I mean, it's. I put it over here on the passenger side because the passenger side rear wheel, if you take off from somewhere and traction is less than perfect, your right rear wheel is most likely going to be the one that's going to spin. Okay? Another uh, change while we're back here air shocks. I know I'm going about this really haphazard, but I'm going about it as I think about stuff. Air shocks. Um, the springs on this, leaf springs on the rear, I'm probably going to change them in the future. I'm probably going to maybe add to them, uh, make my own custom leaf pack. But, as you can see, there is one, two, three, four, five. There's five leaves there to that. Mm. Sorry about that. There's five leaves there to this leaf pack. So, uh, it's like that on both sides. Now, when I'm towing with this, and I do tow uh, my Barracuda usually, when I'm towing like a vehicle with this, it does sag in the rear quite a bit. And I was hoping to get a little bit more control when I'm towing. And the air shocks do help with that. And they're just regular air shocks. There's nothing special. There are no, you know, they're... I bought them at Advance Auto Parts, okay? And they've done really, really well for me. I've got cash shocks on the front, okay? Again, step up from, uh, they're uh, like a really, really good Monroe gas shock. Uh, they actually do pretty good for me. Now, of course, yes, I do have the V6 engine up front, so it is lighter on the front end, but hey, that's what works, okay? I'm just telling you my modifications of what works, okay? All right, while we're back here, and as I've noticed it, tires, wheels. Okay, this is a Mickey Thompson wheel. As a matter of fact, I will show you, see the, the MT right there. This is a 16 by 8 aluminum wheel. Um, that classic look there of the Mickey Thompson wheels. This is... Uh, General Grabber UHPs, 255, 65, 16. Now, you might be saying, wait a minute, didn't this truck come with 15s? And you would be right, it did come with 15s. I changed over to 16-inch because 15, finding 15-inch 15 performance tires was getting harder to do. Now, I don't, I know, it sounds crazy as hell, making a truck handle. You're like, what, what the hell? Making a truck handle? Are you insane? But, hear me out. Remember, I drive this every day. I drive it everywhere. Okay? I would not hesitate to jump in this and drive cross country. That being said, I like handling. I don't need to go off-road. I don't need to have something that's wallowing around through the turns like a, like a boat or something. 
I want something that's taut, that is, uh, you know, handles the curves very, very well. Basically, I want my cake and eat it too. So I want a truck that handles really, really well. Okay, more like a car. Here we go. Now, so that has been my modifications to the rear suspension. Let's go to the front. Now, I've already told you about the gas shocks up front. On the front, I've got the same size wheels and tires. Okay. The another change I've made, and I've probably told you about this change years ago, is I've went to years ago I went to synthetics. Uh, even the wheel bearing grease. Just recently, I redid the front brakes, and I went to. I went to the synthetic grease, the wheel bearing grease, years and years and years ago. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go show you how good synthetic grease really is. I mean, it's really amazing. Let's see, let me go find one of the old rotors. Yeah, here we go. Let you see this. All right. Here we go. Now, to the uninitiated, that looks really, really awful. I guess to those that may not know any better, this would look really horrible. But honestly, it isn't. As you can see right there, this grease could still be very, very useful on a day to day basis. So, as a matter of fact, here's some new grease right here, as you can see. Not tremendously different. I wouldn't mind that that grease and those hubs could probably go another few thousand miles and be just fine. So I'm gonna wipe this off my fingers, my thumb, and I'm going to Okay, but if you haven't, if you're not using synthetic lubricants by now, my only question is why not? I mean, really, yes, I know the initial cost is a little steep, but when you're talking about longevity like that, and those have been on the truck for several years, okay, and haven't been pulled off and repacked at some time in between. I can guarantee you that, okay? So that is really exceptional in my book. I mean, I would, I'm a, I'm a believer. I went through, it's got, that truck's got all synthetics in it. So, but I would, uh, now here's where I'm going to break off this video and I'm going to make it include everything else on the next one okay so uh oh front brakes i used i used wagner thermo quiet front brake pads on mine and one quick little tip change your hoses your brake hoses okay if you don't what can happen is the interior lining of the hose starts to turn into like a one-way check valve after many years of use and then when you hit the brakes, you will have brakes. The brakes will work. The only problem is when you release the pad, you release the brake, not pad, but pedal. What happens is that pedal, that those pads do not release completely from the rotor and it allows, it just hangs up and drags on the rotor all the time. Okay, so it acts like a one-way check valve. And that's not good. You want that pressure to be relieved off the caliper so that the pads aren't dragging on the rotor. So, just a word of caution, you know, on any vehicle, not just these trucks. That's any vehicle, okay? So, um, so I would strongly recommend if you can, you know, change those brake hoses out. It's worth your time, okay? And also, the synthetic grease, synthetic lubricants, period. Uh, gear oil in the rear axle, also uh, in the transmission. 
God's honest truth. I've never had that transmission apart. Never. Not one time. Rear axle, I have, I went and rebuilt it. <sighs> summer before last. Um, so this past summer had been a year ago. And one, you know, one rebuild in three, over 300,000 miles. New bearings in over 300,000 miles. I don't think that's too bad an average. So, okay. Yeah, I'm going to break this video off. And so thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe. And if you please do subscribe and please do share with your friends. Also, if you have any questions, comments, and ideas, anything, put it down there below. I will do my best to get back to you and communicate with you. And uh, there you go. Okay. Thank you very much. And God bless.